Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and today's video we're going to be working on the inside even though there's a ton of work still to be done on the outside. Our goal is to get this ceiling installed so that we don't have to bring our heavy machinery back in here because they're going to be installing all the underground plumbing, electrical, then eventually going to be installing the new concrete floor which means I'm not driving on that, I'm not ruining it. So we're just gonna get it done now. But what that means is we've gotta do a bunch of framing and then we'll be able to put up the ceiling. What I love about the uh, Festool, these knobs on the bottom that are adjustable so you can change it to degrees, that way the track will actually sh you know, change angles, but then you can just lock, lock the tool on, bump it right to your material, and you got a nice cut, and I'm good to go. <laughs> Never fails. Out of nails. Didn't want to let me just get one nail in. Alright, so the next thing that we have to do on this job that we typically don't ever have to do is there's going to be a ceiling that's going to run this way. It's going to run with the pitch of the truss. So typically our steel runs long ways on the building. Well, now that it's going to start here and run to the peak, we're going to have to screw down here, which means we're going to have to get a little bit of framing. So what I'm going to do is just line it up with the bottom of my trusses, hit some nails in the back to make sure it stays stiff, and then that'll be good. So I'm hoping you can hear over that quiet compressor from Milwaukee. I know the mic is going to pick it up and probably make it appear a lot louder. So what I've got to do here is this wall is going to be a spray foam cavity, but it's not going to be entirely spray foam, which means that there's this gap right here. The attic is going to get blown in. That's what this guy is for right here. And I'm gonna wait for the compressor to finish up just to be safe. There, so now the spray foam can be blown up into the wall cavity. It's not gonna make its way up here. And then this gives a nice place to block any of the fiberglass blown in from going down into the wall cavity because it won't be fully filled with spray foam. It's a five and a half inch post with a two by six girt inside and outside, which means it's a really large cavity to fill with spray foam, especially closed cell, we don't need that. And then up here, you can see this uh, air deflector that we use. It allows air to come out of the soffits and make its way up to the ridge vent, but also uh, a nice place to blow in fiberglass without it getting into the soffits, but still maintaining a nice R38 R value out here at the eave. Now that I've got that center point defined, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie a string line to it. I just set a nail and I'm gonna run a string the entire length of this building just to check the center of our peak because it is a raised bottom cord scissor truss, which means you know we want, when our steel is ran on the ceiling, we want that nice straight line. So you can't always go off of the exact center of a truss, unfortunately, because they're not all made perfectly. So. Uh, we've got to make sure that our eave lines, where our gutter line is, is straight for our fascia on our roof. 
and that might mean that if there's any you know quarter inch here eighth inch there on a truss um, that's where it's going to be and we're going to find that out with a string line Perfect on this one. This one's about uh, maybe in three sixteenths. That's not that bad. That's basically center. So now with the string line, I can just go through and at least mark the straightest point between the two ends, not go off of necessarily where this, you know, comes together because that's not always exact. And, um, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to do this. So that way now what we can do is I can set myself a nail at each one of these locations. And then I can measure down each one of these trusses so that I can get a mark and a layout for where we've got to do our framing for our ceiling. Hey, Greg, do you remember all these screws that still got to go in this truss? There, so now when laying out the ceiling, I can just hook this nail with my tape measure and measure from there out. Uh, everything is laid out from this point, so when we push our steel tight into these trims, all of our punch rows will be accurate um, and straight as well, thanks to this string line. <laughs> this is a lot of work. Uh, originally when I thought about this idea of running the steel from the peak to the uh, sidewall, I think it was going to be that bad. I thought, oh, no big deal. We'll just run the scissor lift, frame it up. Didn't know it was going to be 100 million degrees and just a lot of... I think that's the kicker. Uh, it's just the how, heat. How, how hot it is. Yeah, we're just babies. All right, I got a trick for you guys. Uh, you may already know this one, but I'm working over here in the lift by myself. Greg's in his lift by himself. And we're putting some framing between these trusses. Now you can see this one is barely, barely tight. So it does, it's not going to stay by itself. If I walk away, it's going to fall. Um, here's the little trick. Just take yourself a screw and just poke the tip out. Just the tip, okay? Don't go very far. And then get it lined up close to where you want it and push it into it. Now you don't have to worry about holding that end. So that's a cute little tip. Yeah. It's uh, things that you learn when you're working by yourself. And that'll hold it in place while you get your hanger set up. And if you don't go too far or too deep with that tip, you can just move it around a little bit and get it positioned right where you like it. What am I listening to? Tips and Tricks by Kyle.
You like it? Ooh, that's a little too tight. Up here, this two by six that we're running flat, you were probably wondering if that was gonna be enough to support. So the ceiling, A, it's probably going to be strong enough, but B, when my insulator comes up here and has to walk through this roof line uh, in the attic space and blow insulation, he's probably gonna walk on this. And I don't think it's strong enough for that. And there was a couple spots where there's gonna be some ceiling fans hanging. So we went ahead and what I'm doing is T-nailering, T-nailering, I think that's a word, uh, installing a T-nailer here on the top. And what I'm doing is just sliding a joist hanger on the end. And I'm just gonna inset it about an inch. And then once the hangers are installed, I'm just gonna take some ring shank gun nails. Already that's way stiffer. And now that's gonna be nice and solid to hang something. I'll do one on each side. Pretty darn solid now that the framing is done. So the insulator can go up the attic access, which will probably be over here somewhere. And then he can blow and walk down this whole alley here and blow off into the, uh, towards the eaves. It'll be no big deal. Bro, you ready to hang this tarp, Greg? No. You know what's crazy? Normally when we're doing a ceiling, it's like, man, we're like close to the end of the job. <laughs> Not this one. When installing plastic, take the box, cut it up, and uh, make yourself a bunch of little strips of cardboard. I'll show you why. Oh my God, it's hot. You know, running plastic usually Usually we'll use like a four mil, 10 footers, very manageable, but with this layout, just the way it worked, the sheets are 19, 19 six. So it's gonna be pretty much perfect. I got a couple inches at the top, a couple inches at the bottom, and uh, we'll just tape this joint probably at the peak. This all spray foamed on the walls, which gives us our vapor barrier. So uh, this will though, Greg, help keep the uh, heat out of the ceiling from coming down. punch holes so that should be but we need to we need to watch it and make sure that our boards ain't crooked you know I didn't yeah see i think I, I saw one it's further down that way though i mean obviously if it misses we fix it right got you your hand out of yep, your hand yep yep all right oh i've already cut myself nice These, all those uh things are poking right out oh yeah <laughs> so i think this is the same thing you just cut yourself uh, I, don't, I don't know if it was bad cut but I did okay. just slide it across the top. All right. Okay, I'm on my mark. That wasn't too bad, Greg. No. It'll just take some time. No. It ain't easy getting these screws in. Nope. Don't like that at all. Nope. That's why we never did that. But we can't not. We have to punch them. Right. Right. Mm. A little blood. Never hurt nobody. Don't slice your fingers. <laughs> Man, I filleted the tip of my finger, dude. This ain't bad, Greg. Okay, go get in your mark. There. Come on. Woo, <laughs> 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 buddy. I either go right in or I yeah. sit there and shake like, uh, what's his name? I'm not gonna lie, this is a lot easier than running it the other way from a standpoint of just running it, not having to do any laps or nothing. Yeah. You don't ever want to drill your steel. Ever. 
except for a ceiling, because it's never going to see moisture. And if it does, you done messed up with something. I'm sure it's not going to focus, but that's why we're drilling it. We're drilling it because the punches were popping through, slicing my finger. So by drilling it, it should just be a nice clean finish. We're not worried too much about those shavings getting on anything. All right. Also, it's flipped over, so that way any of the shavings will be on the back side. That was pretty cheap. Mark. Okay, put a hand on it. Yeah. Right there. This is easy, man. Oh, oh no. Uh, hanger. Oh, bud. You're going to have a hanger, too. Yep. Put the other one. Yep, <laughs> right there. You know what that means? Punch. Want the drill? Uh, yeah, you can see what's called punch, but it's really weird. Hmm. I gotta do uh, J10 after this? Yep. So just come with me, help me just run them out real quick. Come with me. And we'll put all of the jazz. What do you think? What do you think? It looks good. Ceiling looks nice and flat. Yeah, I, th I think it's all right. So much easier, dude. How it's gonna work. So good. So good at what we do. Okay. Does that look straight still? I think so. Okay. Okay, cool. Got it. It would take me 10 times as long if you weren't here, man. So I do this again, just grab it and just... Let's go. Oh, 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 that feels better, dude. Oh, that feels so much better. So the reason that that, uh, that, that J channel up there at the peak is so important, not only does it visually need to look good, but if this line is not straight, all of our punch lines that we just put in these panels aren't gonna be straight because this is what we're using to make sure that everything is consistent. We make sure that the J channel is straight, then when our steel gets installed, it gets pushed in tight, then all of our drill lines are straight. Also, when we did the framing, it was all based off of this line right here. So um, a lot of times in building, if you can just establish your straight line somewhere that you can use uh, whether that be a story pole or uh, a reference line, those are the types of things that can make your job site a lot more efficient and a lot more quality centric. Is that a word? Quality centric? Sure, we'll, we'll roll with it. All right, Webster, 2020. Sal's homeschool, so anything sounds good. What does? Sal's homeschool, so like any, I mean, you can, you can make anything up. Anything? Yeah, anything. Greg, what's the square root of 69? I think it's eight something. Go ahead, hit. Those some good shoulder pops, though. Yeah, they were. I'll send the bill in the mail. Yeah. 
I'll send the bill right back for impeaching you. What do you say? Go ahead. Another one of the important things when you're doing a ceiling is you gotta have even pressure. Like if I just let this thing hang and it hangs in the middle and Greg's way at the other end and puts a screw in it, as soon as I go to screw this in, think about it. You're taking material that's like this and you're trying to make it like this. It can potentially oil can because of the pressure that you just put on the panel. So just something to think about. Try to be a little bit more sensitive so I understand, okay? I'm on my mark. Right. Go ahead, hit it. Coming. Okay. Got you. So there's no doubt in my mind by running our steel like this uh, up to the peak instead of running it long ways like we always have done, uh, it's a lot more work. It was a lot more framing, it was a lot more layout, but Greg and I both agree that once we started installing the steel, it went extremely fast and we're loving the look of this. So, you know, time is what time is. It costs money, labor costs money, the extra framing costs money, but if the look is what you're after, uh, and definitely when you're doing that raised bottom cord scissor truss like this, I think it adds a lot more depth to that ceiling. Now we can't finish this section over here because we still got to build this chimney uh, on the interior, which means I don't know exactly where all that's going to go yet. So we're just going to leave those sheets off. We'll get that chimney built once the concrete's done and then we'll frame up to the ceiling and then we can, you know, finish those uh, last ceiling panels. The other thing that we were able to do today is get all the house wrap other than over here underneath this porch and uh, the second story porch. We're just leaving that open now because we're not really too worried. You know, I just wanted to protect uh, the main majority of the building from weather blowing in or whatever. And the big thing for me was up here getting this gable end and the other gable end where the chimney is covered in now that we're going ahead with the ceiling. I think it's awesome. This this really makes the space look and feel a lot bigger. You know, just really defining the shape of this interior. So I'm really excited. Tomorrow is the weekend. We'll be back Monday to finish up this other side of the ceiling. And then my hope is that we can get on the roof, get the chimney built, start wrapping up that detail so that we can get our ridge cap on. Uh, and I definitely will take you through that. I know a lot of people want to know about the ridge cap on the second story porch, how we're going to do that. How do we make it waterproof? How do we make it look good? Uh, I'll take you through that. Make sure you guys hang around, follow along, and we'll be back with another video just as soon as I can. So thanks a lot for the support and we'll catch you later.